If you're seeing this, you're probably thinking I'm having a hard time finding another program for download. That's actually not the case. I found it, downloaded it, and worked around those annoying downloaders for these two. However, what my problem is, well, I'll give you a background for now. First, I want you to note something here. What is this? Windows updates, right? Nothing special there, other than the fact they're rather annoying at times. However, I get these updates all installed, supposedly goes just fine. Click finish or done, whichever one it was. And see the shield here? It goes away. 15 seconds later, the shield comes back. Okay, so maybe I've got more updates available. So, I run the updates, install them and all that other stuff that you're probably very familiar with in Windows. So, I let the updates install. No big deal there. Click finish. Shield goes away. 15 seconds later, shield's back. And, okay, something strange about that. And I notice, 979909. Again. I literally memorize that because I've installed these same updates 15 times. And this up here should be a pretty good hint. Infinite install loop. That's basically what it is. It's an infinite install loop. So that's basically what caused me to have to find an uninstaller for .NET Framework so I can try to clean install everything. So, well, I'll show you something else. And bring up the control panel, add remove programs. And let's see. Microsoft.NET Framework 4. But where's 1, 1.1, 1 .1, 2, 3, and 3.5? I don't see those, so I guess they're not installed. So, let's install them. Here is version 1. I'm going to install that. Um, hmm, okay, this is strange. So I get an error message. How exciting. This, for some reason, just doesn't make sense. I just don't get this. I'm installing version 1. Service Pack 3, because it's got all those up, updates and bug fixes all thrown in. So, oh, that don't make much sense. Okay, so maybe that download is somehow wrong. That's actually not the fourth time I've downloaded that. Okay, so maybe it's that particular version that's screwed up. So, okay, I'll try version 1.1. And doesn't this error message look very familiar? It looks pretty much exactly the same thing. The only difference is that this is a 1 instead of a 0, and this is a three, 1 instead of a 3. Only two little bytes different. Whoopee. So, okay, maybe version 1 is screwed up and just won't install, period. Okay, so I'll try version 2. This seems to be a lot better. Hey, no errors. Amazing. Well, at least compared to that. This I've already sent like 15 times now because I've been trying to install this. Well, it's not really 15. It's rather exaggerated, but still, you get the idea. It's rather ridiculous. So, I'll just click install. Installing. Okay, so, it's typical for installing programs. Nothing new there. Right? Seems pretty standard. However, after some time... Yep, still seems normal. Of course, the cancel button isn't available, but that's no big deal. <laughs> now it is available, that's strange. Oh boy, oh great. Wouldn't you know it? And the very familiar send error report to Microsoft. Doesn't this look so familiar with Windows? <laughs> yep. So, I usually just send error report. That's like the 15th or time, so time sent that. So, okay, apparently version 2 screwed up. Hmm. Maybe I need version 3 or something. Maybe I don't need version 2. So, try this. Of course, there's nothing special here or anything. 
Because I've already read through that. I'm still in progress. It doesn't really matter here. So, it's just pretty much like installing any other program. Hmm. Of course, it looks pretty much the same as what version 2 has, as far as the overall appearance. Oh no, not again. Oh boy, I think now you get the idea what my problem is. And you'll notice that the, that is an x86. So yes, that does mean it's 32-bit, and that's basically what I have. Is Windows XP is almost exclusively 32-bit. There is a 64-bit edition, but I don't happen to have it. So, nothing really special there, apparently. So, maybe I need the more recent update available. Version 3.5. Why does it extract to the E drive instead of the C drive? I'm actually wondering if that is the culprit behind all the problems. Because C is where Windows is. E is just where all my videos and stuff are. No programs at all. This may look suspicious, but I've actually found a way to bypass that with a super annoying downloader if this huge file size is any hint. It's only when it starts getting to 10 gigabytes that the download starts causing problems. So, of course, downloading. Boy, that is so fast for downloading 56 MB, I'll tell you. But no, I don't have any internet anywhere near that fast. After all, I don't see much point beyond 4 Mbps for download and 2 Mbps for up. Well, up might be a little different, though, but in some cases. But still, either way, so far it seems normal. So far. It is supposedly the most recent version, aside from version 4. Oh, no, not again. Yep, you know the drill, right? Yep, this time I'm going to be sending that, because this is more recent, but I think that's not the third time I've sent it for this particular install. So, okay, what do I need dot f net, .NET Framework for anyway? Well, there's actually only two things that I'm aware of that uses it. That's this, and this. Neither of these can run because of that. So, okay, what's this all about? Well, that's for those M2TS files. Because before I had to use this, which works very well and has worked in the past. However, there's a problem. What's the problem? It also requires .NET Framework. Four, supposedly, although it might be three or something less, I don't know exactly, but something is strange. But I had to convert those M2TS files to AVI so that this can work. But even with an overclock processor at four gigahertz, exactly, that doesn't help any. It does help with the Platform Masters videos, at least, though, considerably. But it's not significant enough. This at least doesn't have the M2TS problems or something, but strangely enough, it can't play back 640 by 448. Huh? That is so weird. This program can play back 1024 by 768 at 60 FPS, such as that Air Taxi video I often mentioned. Slight overclocking otherwise fixes the slight speed problems. But this, it can't even play it at all. It's so stop and go. So, that's basically all the only thing I really need frame, net, .NET Framework for. So, right now, I've also tried System Restore, going back several weeks, to the point where, even before I had that inf infinite install loop that I was aware of, that's only a week ago, actually, and, well, I'm pretty much at a loss right now. I have no idea what's going on. Do note that I barely know anything about .NET Framework. The only thing I'm aware of it is that something like the msvcr.exe 
80.dll there's no first dotting it was actually a little mistake but either way does anybody know what's going on short of reinstalling windows is really about the only thing i can come up with